hey guys, welcome to my portion of the Hush Life vlog. It's not very difficult to uh, to notice what I'm doing, right? Got a deer set on there and one small elk antler. Really made a big push today to get somewhere I've been wanting to go. And I was almost to where I needed to be to really glass some country. And then that's when I found the one elk shed. But what kept me from going up is I glassed below me and found a carcass, which was easily um, noticeable that it was an elk carcass. And my guess at the time was it's gotta be a bull because I'm in the bull zone. Sure enough, I kept picking it apart. It was really brushy down there. I was glassing down there and could see the left antler of this dead elk. So it's a dead head that unfortunately I'm not able to recover where I'm at, so I have to call it in a fishing game and let them do their thing. Um, I don't want to show you guys pictures of it until I have like the answer and until it's recovered. So fingers crossed that I'm able to get that dead head. It is pretty sweet, not gonna lie. And I'm excited to show it to you guys on an upcoming vlog or maybe the soonest you'll see it is on the Shed Tour video. Which by the way, Shed Tour went live today, so super excited about that. It's episode one. If you guys watched it, let me know what you thought. And uh, this is just kind of the end of my day hike, second day out here. And I'm gonna go back to the truck and I'll show you guys what I found yesterday, a couple nice ones. Last uh, day of this quick little trip. And uh, let me give you guys a tour of our truck camp. We're kind of breaking down, but this is what I had going on. I had my, my bedroll, my canvas cutter bedroll. I had a little Camp Chef stove last night, cooking dinner, a little Yeti cooler. Brought my Yeti camp chair. And then Ben is the king of truck camping. He's got his whole setup, which he's gonna make us. Do you have deer roast? Yeah, I got, uh, yeah, it's either deer or elk, I can't remember. Wild game sandwiches that Ben made at home. And then let me introduce you to Skylar. Welcome to the video, Skylar. What's up, guys? First appearance on our channel. Yep. Uh, so Skylar and his wife have a YouTube channel called Skynick Hunting. Is hunting in the name? Yep, Skynick Sky Hunting. Hunting yep. Yeah. So if you guys want to watch his video and perspective of some of the sheds he found, you can go to his channel. He picked up this sweet underbull, and he also picked up this hard white. And we were just doing the math on the maps, and he found these in the same general area that Ben and I found the white. So there's definitely a pocket last year where the bulls hung out and shed. Funny thing is, he, he came pretty dang close to both of these and missed them. I left them there for you guys. It yeah, felt he bad. felt bad. You guys hadn't found anything all day, so. <laughs> that's the stack. I mean, that's that was a three guys stacking probably like at least eight, nine miles each, I'll bet. Yeah. My goal yesterday was five sheds. I got two, one brown, one white, one I glass. Most of these trips turn into there's definitely shed hunting, but there's a lot of hanging out, which is honestly most of the fun. Good conversation, good business, life talk, stuff like that. So, Good morning, everybody. Back home and uh, back on the daily grind. It's a cool spring morning here in Salt Lake. The sun is just barely coming up over the mountains over here. It's always funny because when I go to the gym at this time, the sun will be up right here, but as I go south, the mountain climbs up and then um, the sun is not up and I'm always like, yeah, I'm up before the sun. <laughs> so I made it back from my last shed trip. Um, no call from fishing game yet, unfortunately. I would hate for this one to get snagged and, and picked up by somebody else. So fingers crossed still on that big dead head. And I will be showing you guys as soon as I can. Just don't want to give away what bull it is or maybe where it's at at the moment. I'm sure you can understand. But today I'm going to the gym. Um, to train arms with my buddy Tori. No, 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 no. I think it's gonna be chest today. So it's chest day or back day. I guess we have to decide when we get there. But what is it now? It is April, uh, my birthday month. And I'm curious how many of you are starting or maintaining you know, your fitness goals to prepare for the hunts. One thing that I do every summer is kind of do what I call like just a summer shred. I'll Try to lean down and get ready for the fall hunts because August, September are really run and gun style hunts for me. Um, so I'm just curious how many of you are actually, you know, considering your fitness and health goals, uh, not only for just day to day life, but for your hunting, uh, for the hunting side of things. Let me know in the comment section. Man, today is cold. 
back home, had a great workout as usual. And now I'm going to do what I do a lot of the time when I have free time is uh, cut and sand dog chews. So a lot of people who watch our shed tour videos seem to ask what happens with all the sheds or what do you do with all the sheds? And the answer to that is collect them. Uh, sometimes I sell some of them. And for the last little while, I've actually been cutting them up into dog chews. So this stack right here, for example, the lower stuff, this is all dog chew inventory that I need to cut. Some of this top is chalk that I will not use. It just doesn't meet the standards of the dog chews. It's too chalky and old. And then this side is actually some of last year's keepers, which I don't necessarily need them, but... You know, now that I have more space at this new house with the detached garage, I, I don't know, I might start, I've started to keep some of the stuff that I typically would just sell off to an antler buyer myself, so. Here we go, I just got it uh, cleaned up yesterday. This place is either really clean or a giant disaster, it never seems to have an in-between. But uh, we've got all the Can-Am stuff. We've been working on our side-by-side Can-Am and Matt has been over here a couple times. So we took care of what we needed. Now we actually have some extra parts and accessories that you can swap out and use as needed. So um, I guess we'll just store those in here for now. But this stack, for example, the majority of this stack is all my keeper stuff for elk. And then there's like a layer of deer, some axis deer, and then there's even some bulls that I've killed over the years. But this stack right here, Basically, from here forward, that's this year's antler collection um, from, I'd say it's like 98% mine. I know Matt has a couple, maybe three or four sheds in here that are Matt's. But yeah, this is the stack this year. I know if you watch Shed Tour episode two that went live yesterday, this is the big heavy one. Some other antlers in there that I'm sure you would recognize. This is the one that was right next to the Coos deadhead. So... The stack's looking pretty healthy and inventory for dog shoes is looking pretty healthy, but it's nice to have this place picked up because it had been torn up pretty good. So, yeah, I love it out here. I really do when it's at least warm enough, warm enough to open up the garage. I really enjoy this place. I even did a workout yesterday here, which I haven't used for a while. So yeah, that's the shop. Okay guys, before I end uh, my section of the vlog, I wanted to answer a question or two on YouTube comments that were on the recent Shed Tour video uh, that went, went live yesterday. Some are comments and some might just be, I don't know, questions. The first one, I thought this was interesting because nobody's really asked, but a guy named David asked, have you ever fallen with a full pack and broken an antler? So talking about like having a full pack of antlers on my back Fallen, yes. And broken antlers, chipped points. Sometimes I don't know until I get home, but chipped points are pretty common. Um, and that's for two reasons. One, falling and just landing on the back of the pack, chipping a point. Two, is putting your backpack down. Like when me and Matt were climbing out of this trip, every, I don't know, 20 minutes, we had to take a break because we were so tired, but just putting your backpack down and sometimes it just hits a rock just right, you'll chip the points. but. I've never really broken like a big tine off or a main beam, but chip points are very, very common. Uh, this is just a comment that I wanted to shed some light on. Lewis said, I like the campfire talk. No lights needed, just reflection of the fire off your face. It makes it feel personal. Haven't seen that done very much. What's fun about making videos is seeing what you guys like and what you guys connect with. And I have noticed over the years that just campfire is so relatable and a lot of people have left positive comments whether we're cooking dinner or we just put the camera up next to the fire and have a little conversation um, so I'm I appreciate that people like that stuff because it's it's not a highlight real right like our content is a lot of storytelling we guys show you the good the bad everything in between the snacks um, and sometimes campfire so if you like the campfire talk let me know in the comment section but yeah that's it for for my section of the vlog I wanted to wrap this up I'm actually editing it right now here in the kitchen so it'll be live for you guys and uh, we'll see you next week on the vlog. Make sure you subscribe so you can stay caught up on all the Shed Tour series and all the daily videos outside of the vlog. And again, appreciate you guys and we'll see you on the next one. What's up guys? Uh, welcome back to my little section of the weekly vlog. 
I'm back at Wild Arrow Archery, Jay and Cody and the crew, and uh, putting together some bows. Jay, we're doing some different stuff this year. I've historically um, run the black gold sight for basically, I think ever, honestly. I don't know that I've ever run anything different. But I'm trying out what all the cool kids are shooting this year. Ultra view, baby. So it's the ultra view sight system. I'm going to let Jay talk about all the features and benefits because there's a lot of them. Tell me why these are so dang popular right yeah. now. Guys just love this little scope. This is the double pin in a 19 thousandths. Um, cool light system for guys that like to use that. You can just turn it on and off pretty easy. And then there's an option to be able to illuminate the level bubble in there. And if I want to turn that off, I can press and hold for three seconds. Turns it off. But just a clean scope. The double pin system seems to work really well for guys, especially on this new landslide site from Trueball. Double pin indicator. So... You kind of get that clean single pin sight picture, but with two pins. So if you have an animal that moves on you, but been a really popular combo for us this year. Guys are absolutely loving it. And then uh, this year we're going to have Brian try the new rest from Hamski. This is called the Epsilon. Uh, I've been a big fan of Hamski for years, but this new model, it when it mounts to the riser, it's more like the integrate system from Hoyt where uh, it's really tight to the riser, so it doesn't stick out too far. You can still get a quiver to sit really tight. It is limb-driven, so how limb-driven rests work is the cable from the rest comes down and connects to the limb, and as you draw, the limb flexes in and allows the rest to lift up, and then as you fire, the limb pulls the cable down and pulls the rest out of the way. But super accurate rest, now that they've you know, trimmed them down, they're a little bit smaller, compact, lighter weight. This has been our number one selling rest in the shop this year, so... This combo here, the new Venom Pro, Hamski, True Bolt, and Ultra View, it's going to be a killer. Man, it's early to mid-April, and if you are in the market to get a new bow, or maybe you got a new bow, or maybe you have an old bow that needs to get tuned, I can't encourage you enough to go get that done right now. Do not wait until the end of May or June or July, because in Utah at Wild Arrow, um, the minute the draw results are released for the state of Utah specifically, things pick up dramatically in the bow shop and your lead time is just going to get further extended out every year unfortunately there are people that walk in the door in august just before opening day and are hoping to come in and get a tune or maybe some new strings get some arrows built you name it that is a bad idea do not do that don't be that guy or girl take care of this stuff now you you these guys will thank you Right? You'll well, thank yourself. <laughs> and you'll thank yourself because you'll actually have, yes. have all your stuff. So the, uh, the Venom Pro is getting set up, uh, which I think is going to be kind of like uh, – I'm going to try to play around with a couple setups this year. But I'm going to stay true to my arrow build that I've always done, which um, last year transitioned down to the 4mm Easton Axis. And then I'm running like the Valkyrie system with the half out, about 200 grains up front, and total – arrow weight I think it's like 476 I've been happy with that I'm going to continue that but then we're going to play around with kind of two different setups so one for possibly like elk and then one more for maybe like whitetail uh, target shooting so this one's kind of going to be more along the lines of the whitetail target shooting whether that's like total archery challenge any other like 3d courses the other one well I'm going to stay true to the black the black gold slider and that'll be kind of more my, my run and gun elk setup. And I'll show you that here, here shortly. But um, can't recommend the guys enough at Wild Arrow. Again, if you've watched any of our videos over the years, you realize this is, uh, this is where all the bow build, arrow build magic happens. We've been working with Jay and Cody for, gosh, I don't know, probably seven or eight years now. Done a ton of videos on our channel, different bow builds. You can check out the bow build playlist just to get an idea of what they offer that you might not find at other shops or big box stores. We like to call it the wild arrow experience. So when you buy a bow here, they get you all set up. They actually take the time to run through kind of like, A, making sure it's tuned to you as an individual and not just a general tune to their own hand. But then uh, you get a lot of extra love, tips, support, tactics, lessons <laughs> in a lot of cases. <laughs> they just take the time and uh an energy to walk you through all the specifics and it's been interesting over the years a lot of people have flown in from other states because they can't find what they're looking for in their home state to come to wild arrow and experience 
the Wild Arrow experience with Jay, right? That's right. Happens yeah. all the time. I'll get phone calls from across the country going, my shop doesn't know how to do any of that. So, yeah, if you're not feeling confident with your equipment, if you have questions, feel free to call us. But, yeah, if you want to fly in for an experience, man, we can make it happen for them. Anyways, we're going to get back to building some bows. We'll show you kind of like uh, the other bow that we have too, which is the RX-7. I'm going to get that set up today. But it's uh, the spring is here. Uh, for most of us across the U.S. and kind of starting to get that itch to get out and start shooting, preparing for fall, which will be here before you know. Uh, this one, I should uh, turn out. Dude, first shot, money. You don't have to touch yeah. anything. Makes my job really easy. So, uh, yeah, it's going to be a good build. Same tight spot, Hamsky Epsilon, and then we ran your black gold from last year, but we did upgrade you to that new Quick Link system. Um, really convenient, take on and off, and yeah, I think you're going to, gonna love that especially the new ghost sticks man yeah these these are new from Hoyt this year um, the ghost sticks which make for a cool stand so got the uh, carbon RX7 got the new ghost sticks look at that just just like that stuff's been hard to get this year supply chain so I've been telling guys if you need something for hunting season come in now do not wait till July August you will probably not get it you heard it here first uh, welcome back to uh, my little section again. Catching back up with you a few days after we were at Wild Arrow setting up bows and figured I'd give you a little bit of feedback after the first week of shooting. Uh, we got the Venom Pro right here and this is one that Jeremiah and Cody recommended I um, try out the UltraView uh, scope site. So this is the UV3 Hunter. It's the, the double pin 0 .019 uh, pin diameter and size and I got to tell you I'm pretty dang impressed so far let me show you what it looks like when you get this uh, scope turned on and again you'd have to check your local state um, laws and identify would an illuminated reticle be legal so make sure you check that out before you maybe even consider looking at this thing but I've been shooting the traditional black gold sight forever um, it's been great I've liked it a lot but I tell you the illuminated reticle is incredible. Let me show you what I'm talking about. This is my little downstairs range. It's about 16 yards that I can shoot at. And here it is with it turned off. But when you hold this button, that is what it becomes. And I, I mean, it's just such a game changer. The bubble is lit up. You can turn that off if you'd like. And then I've got like the top pin is green right now. I only have it sighted in for 20 yards. The lighting down here is not awesome. And look at how that thing just glows. So just uh, for comparison's sake, I'll show you what it looks like through the black gold. So there is an example of what the sight window looks like. I've got um, a four pin slider set up on this one, kind of run at 30, 40, 50, 60, and then would be able to slide from 60. And again, served me very well over the years. Still have it obviously on this bow. But dang, does that illuminated reticle stick out. Um, never have used an UltraView product before, so this is my first experience with it. And so far, I'm impressed. I uh, haven't had it out shooting outside yet. Just been shooting down here. We'll go take a look at the first little group. And again, just trying to get in the swing of things for shooting bows. But so far, so good. I'm happy with how things are progressing even though it's just 16 yards. The, uh, the other thing that I've enjoyed so far are these Hoyt Go Sticks. Pretty much just a stand for your bow, but it's nice to just have something to set your bow down on when you're going to retrieve your arrows. So that's all I got for this week, guys. Hope you have a fantastic Monday, and we'll see you next week. Going? We live? Live at five. All right, guys, so today for our section whoa, of whoa, the blog. Whoa. Hold on, okay. first things first. Welcome the people back, dude. Hey guys, <laughs> welcome back to the Hush Life vlog. Zoom in. Zoom in. I'm gonna show you guys, welcome back to the vlog, first of all, thanks for tuning in. Um, a lot of positive comments on the vlogs lately. You guys wanna see what we're up to. So I'm gonna show you guys, I'm gonna walk you through how to order a Sony A7S III on Amazon right now. Check it out. <laughs> order a new camera. <laughs> it's not part of the deal. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna get kicked off the vlog real fast. I'm, I kick myself off. <laughs> Guys, welcome back to the Hush Life Vlog. Hopefully you guys have been enjoying these. A couple things I wanna jump on here and talk about. Our weather's really crappy right now. I was gonna go fishing this morning and the weather sucks, it's snowing. Anyway, schedule. Yeah. So, you wanna hold this? My arm's tired already. 
Guys, schedule. So we have been doing uh, best season yet was on Thursdays and Sundays, but we wrapped up with best season yet. So here's the schedule moving forward at this point. Every Sunday is gonna be a new video. Um, we're in shed tour right now, and we're also doing the finishing up our Mexico Grand Adventure is what I'm calling it. If you guys haven't watched, Eric went and did a coos deer hunt. We went and did some bass fishing, and then me and Logan went back and did a mule deer hunt. So we're, we're on the mule deer hunt right now. So this week, it's Monday, you're getting a vlog. Tomorrow, Tuesday, you're gonna get the second video of mule deer hunting in Sonora. Wednesday. Can I show them a sneak peek real quick? Let's show them sneak peek. Sneak peek. Yeah, that's, that's what you're gonna show them? <laughs> it's, it's a hook. They're gonna be hooked. Okay guys, you get a little sneak peek of what's to come tomorrow. That's a, that's a giant. Okay, that's what they get. I don't like where your head's at. I don't wanna talk, what, what? I don't wanna talk about that. <laughs> So tomorrow, if you're watching this on Monday, tomorrow that video will go up. Wednesday, we're gonna have a new video up, our Brush for Bucks uh, conservation project we did uh, last weekend will go up Wednesday. Thursday, new shed tour video. That's a video every day this week so far. So our schedule is gonna look like this moving forward. Sundays, Thursdays, if we have the content, we're gonna put it up on Tuesdays, extra videos. And then every Monday is a Hush Life vlog. And we are gonna get back into the podcasts. Podcasts usually go up on Wednesday. So cranking out a lot of content right now. Hopefully you guys are enjoying it. Um, and hopefully you guys are getting ready to get out and do some springtime things. We are, me and Logan are headed to South Dakota a week from today to go turkey hunting. I have actually two really good bear tags in my pocket. I finally drew a bear tag in Utah. I had like 13 points. I was trying to get rid of them for the last few years. Finally, the state of Utah decided to take my money and take my points and gave me a bear tag. So I'm super excited about that. So we're going to have a lot more shed stuff coming up, some turkey stuff, some bear hunting, all the springtime fun, a lot of fly fishing stuff. But anyway, that's kind of your update of the schedule and uh, how it's going to be laid out moving forward. I feel like Logan has something to say. He walked over to my desk. Uh, I'm just going to leave you guys with this. If you don't already, uh, make sure to follow us on Instagram, at GetHushin. I just posted this really funny reel. If you want to watch the whole thing, go to the Instagram and check it out. That's all you're going to see. Jeez, that's, that's all I got. Cliffhangers for me I today. Cliffhanger. It's not Logie Bear anymore. It's Logie the Cliffhanger. Um, yeah, make sure you follow us on all our social media platforms, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, and YouTube. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. I think it would be right here. A lot of our views right now, for whatever reason, is coming from non-subscribers. So make sure you hit the subscribe button, turn on the notification so you get notified when you get a new video goes up. And uh, enjoy the content, guys. Until next week. We'll see ya. Bye. What is going on everybody and welcome back to the Hush Life vlog. Today I wanted to do something a little bit different and go over some camera gear. Pretty excited. I recently upgraded to a new vlog camera. So for some shed hunts and some little ice fishing trips that I want to take you guys along on but don't want to lug around a big camera body like this, I decided to buy the Sony ZV-1. And now everybody on the Hush team, this is their new vlog camera. We got a few of them. So all of Shed Tour 2022 will be filmed on this camera right here. I get a lot of questions, Logan and I, about hey, I'm getting into hunting, photography, videography, and I want to buy a camera that's a little bit better than my cell phone. What I've been telling everybody and what I can tell them confidently because I've, I've used this camera and I've studied the specs for a while is go for something like the Sony ZV-1. This camera is super easy to use, super lightweight, portable, and it's something that you can have on you all the time, which is always great when filming because you'll be apt to use it more often than having something buried in your backpack. So the Sony ZV-1 has a souped up mic. It can film 1080 HD in 120. Um, it can film 4K 60 and 4K 24. So this is just an awesome little camera. The camera I'm currently filming on and the camera that Logan is filming on are very similar. Logan films on the Sony A7R 3 and that's what I used to film on until recently, I upgraded to the Sony a7 IV. This camera is just a beast of a camera. It's Sony's newest camera body. I can't, I can't say enough good things about it. The reason I upgraded is this camera has better low light capabilities, better autofocus, better in-body stabilization. It films everything on a 7K sensor and crops into 4K, so it's an oversampled image, which is really good for 
if I want to film something at 200 yards, I can punch in four times to 1080 and they'll still look crisp. It won't look pixelated at all. So that's really huge when filming hunting and fishing. You're not always going to be able to frame the, the content the way you want it to, but you can do a lot of that stuff in post edit. You can crop in and keyframe stuff around to where you want it. I went with something like this. Instead of going to the Sony a7S 3 I went for, for the Sony a7 IV. The a7S 3 is better for video. It films 4K 120. Just a beast of a camera. It's Sony's camera that they intended strictly for video, but it only has a 12 megapixel sensor, which isn't great for photos. You can still get killer photos, don't get me wrong, but this camera has a 30 megapixel sensor so for all the stuff I photograph for our Instagram and our website and banners and sponsors and things like that I needed a camera that was more in the middle and not strictly video. I'm just going to go over a few accessories that I have on here because this is my dream setup and I figured you guys might be interested because we get several questions. So what I have on here right now the Sony a7 IV body with a small rig cage and a small rig grip. I have the Sony ECM B1 shotgun mic. I think that's the name, I'll put it right here. But the shotgun mic, it requires no cables or cords. Like other microphones, it's all digital through the hot shoe, which is super sweet. I will say that the shock mount on this mic is not super great. If you're shaking a whole lot, you'll hear some of that. So I hope they come out with a generation two that has a little bit better shock mount. 24 to 240 lens, this lens is a beast. It will cover all the focal range that I need for filming archery or rifle over the shoulder type stuff, but still be wide enough that I could potentially vlog with it if needed. So this is just a killer setup. I also run a couple accessories on top of that. I run the Weeble 2 gimbal. So some of my favorite footage and work I've ever done has come off of using the gimbal. It's a bit of a hassle to balance it and to use it all the time. But every time I use it and take the time to use it and lug it around, it's my best work I've ever done. So click up here to this llama video. You can see the intro to that. That was filmed with this gimbal. And uh, so that's something I use often. And then when I'm not using the gimbal, I use an iFootage monopod. This thing is sweet. It's got a quick disconnect right here. So you can keep this on your camera at all times and put it back on kind of just like a socket. Super sweet. It's always at the forefront of our mind to get the most stable footage we can get for you guys. But it's really hard to do with this type of content we create. We don't reenact anything. We can't rewind. We can't do anything. So sometimes it's easiest just to yank the camera off your shoulder and film like this. And it may not always be the most stable and best looking footage, but that's why we've upgraded camera bodies and lenses with the most stabilization you can basically buy in a camera today. So those are a few accessories that I have been using. I also still use the camera body I'm filming with right now. This is the Sony a7C with the Zeiss 16 to 35 lens. I love that. It's such a compact little full frame camera body and I'm running the Rode Video Micro as the mic right now and as you can tell this audio is pretty dang good for a $50 microphone versus something like a $250 microphone. So that's a killer setup I love to use. I also run the Sony G Master 1 to 400 lens with a doubler so it's a 2 to 800. This is basically a spotting scope. What I'm planning on doing this year is carrying my Sony a7C that I'm filming with right now with this lens attached to it at all times with a big beefed up iFootage Gazelle carbon fiber tripod. Have that all set up ready to go on my backpack so when we're ready to take a shot or film something in the distance I can just yank that off and I don't have to swap lenses or anything. But this lens will cover anything within 150 yards to 200 yards pretty easily. Lastly I wanted to talk about I recently had my computer take a crap so I upgraded and I got the MacBook Pro 16 inch with the M1 processor chip which that MacBook has been a lifesaver. It's so much faster than my old MacBook. Super grateful for it and I'm going to promise you right now I will be filming more and more footage in 4K and this computer can handle it because that was kind of the barrier to entry in the past was it just takes up so much file space on hard drives like you're just ripping through terabyte hard drives when you're filming as much as we do. 
So one was storage and two was just the processor and power to process all that 4K footage. So I know that was a lot of a lot of gear talk and geek talk and I would not be offended if you guys just fast forwarded through that. But we get enough questions and I'm interested in that kind of stuff and it's not really talked about in the hunting space too often. So I figured I'd make my portion of the vlog more tech central. So in other news, I don't know if you can see right behind me down there, but Eric and I just got back from our first trip of Shed Tour 2022. So many cool pickups, so many cool antlers. I've been working on those videos. You can expect to see those probably in two weeks, two and a half weeks. If you have any questions, please DM me. I'd be happy to answer any camera questions, but I hope that I answered all of them in this video. I just encourage anybody who has a desire to pick up a camera and to film, just do it. I mean, there's so much free content on YouTube to learn how. That's what I've done to learn everything that I continue to learn and have learned. So don't be afraid. So thanks for watching my portion of the vlog. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you would like to see more of this techie kind of stuff and maybe even some editing tips, leave a comment below and make sure you hit that thumbs up and subscribe. And I will see you guys on the next video. Peace.